In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about differentiability. A function f is differentiable at a point t, let's say, provided f prime at t exists. A function is differentiable on an interval, suppose that interval is a, b, provided for every element in that interval, f prime at t exists. So differentiability, much like continuity, is defined point-wise. A function is differentiable at a particular point if that derivative at that point exists, and you would say a function is differentiable on the entire interval, provided everything that you take in that interval, that derivative exists at that particular point you've chosen. All right, let's look at an example here. So for this first example here, we give us the function um, absolute value of x. Now, visually, if you remember, absolute value of x looks like this. Uh, if you take a look, we had discussed that um, if you take a look at the limit as x were to approach 0, we discussed uh, an earlier lesson, as I approach 0 from the left or right-hand side of this function, the limit exists, and it is actually equal to 0. And we also discovered that the function at 0 of your absolute value is, is also 0. So from this, we actually came to the conclusion that f is continuous at x equals 0. But the question now becomes, is it differentiable? For f to be differentiable at 0, f prime at 0 must exist. So the question becomes is, does f prime at 0 exist? All right, let's take a look at defining this. Well, uh, the limit as h goes to 0 of f prime at 0 would be the limit as h goes to 0 of f at 0 plus h minus f at 0 over h. Well, that's going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of the absolute value of h minus the absolute value of 0 over h, which is the limit as h goes to 0 of absolute value of h over h. Now you'll notice here, if I continue this here, if I go to take the limit as h goes to 0, if I took the limit as I approach 0 from the right of the absolute value of h over h, if I approach 0 from the right-hand side, this would be the limit as h goes to 0 from the right of h over h, because h is now approaching 0 from the positive side, so I can just drop the absolute value side, I get 1. However, if I take the limit as h goes to 0 from the left, of absolute value of h over h. Now I'm approaching 0 from the negative side, in which case I can drop the absolute value sign. It can cost me a minus sign. And now these h's cancel, and I end up getting negative 1. So you can see here that as I go to calculate my derivative at 0, and I go ahead and take my limit, I'm finding that as I approach the limit from the left and approach the limit from the right, I actually get different values. And because of those different values, we can now conclude that f prime at 0 does not exist, as this limit here does not exist. So therefore, f prime at 0 does not exist and is not differentiable. Taking a quick look at this absolute value function, the reason why we have that the function is continuous, we've shown it's continuous here, but the reason why you have it's not differentiable is because differentiability is, again, you're, you're assessing the slopes of, the, of these tangent lines as we go down the curve. Well, right at this point right here, we have a, a, an abrupt change in the slope. You can see here the slope is negative and trending downwards. Then instantly, it stops, and the slope of the next tangent line is now going the exact opposite direction. Um, and that, this, that creates a, very, a point. And whenever you have these points, these sharp peaks, I should say, on these graphs, these represent abrupt changes in the rate of change of this function. And these abrupt changes, like we just talked about, cause these peaks, and these peaks or points are not differentiable. It's a lot like in grade 9, um, if you were to, if someone were to ask you to graph the equation, let's say x equals 2, you would say, if I want to graph the equation x equals 2, it might look something like this. Uh, let's say that looks like your the graph of x equals to 2. Notice here then that one question you might have been asked um, is, what's the slope? And the slope here you would say is undefined. And the reason for that is it's infinitely steep. 
this line here is infinitely steep. You can't measure its steepness because it can't be any steeper. It's the maximum steep steepness, so it has no real measure of steepness. And much like that, these points here, these sh sharp peaks, cause points of non-differentiability. So functions can be continuous, as we see here, but that does not imply that they're differentiable. However, the opposite is true. If a function is differentiable, then that function is also continuous. So if you have a differentiability at a point, you automatically have continuity at a point. The other way, as we just saw, does not work. You can have functions that are continuous. Limits can exist, they can be continuous, but at certain points, they can be not differentiable. And the example we just did was absolute value of x. Let's take a look at some other examples of points of non-differentiability. So this function here, this is the function x to the power of a third. And if you go to look at this graph here, as we're creating our graph here, we see here we have, I can go ahead and calculate the slope of these tangent lines. And you can see these tangent lines, the slopes are increasing, increasing. And then once we hit here, we actually have a vertical tangent line. And in that case there, because of that vertical tangent line, we can see that my slopes, as I move up this graph, you can see that the slopes are becoming steeper and steeper until they actually become perfectly vertical. And then they kind of trail off and the steepness subsides. So at this point right here at zero, this would be another example of a non-differentiable point. Let's look at another. Okay, this is a graph of x to the two-thirds. And you'll notice here again, we have this peak. As I go along the graph here, I can see the slopes of my tangent equations are getting steeper and steeper. And again, very, very steep until it comes right to a point. And then instantly we have a change, an abrupt change in direction. And now the slopes are in the positive. So we can see here, this also creates a peak and that's a point of non-differentiability. Because if you take a look here, as I approach zero from the left-hand side, let's say, my secant, my tangent equation is negative, slope's negative. As I approach it from the right, the slope is positive. That abrupt change causes that peak, and that'll cause non-differentiability for x to the power of two-thirds. All right, let's take a look at an example of these side by side. In this question here, they give you a function f, and they want us to graph its derivative. Well, if you notice here, when you're graphing this here, the first thing I'm noticing is I have a peak right here. That is a point where the function is not differentiable. So at that point here, its derivative will be a vertical asymptote, right? That function is not differentiable. Now, what's happening as my function f approaches this peak, how does that affect the way the derivative looks? Well, if you notice here, the slopes of these tangent lines are become coming very, very steep, almost where they're perfectly vertical. So you have a general graph that's going to look something like this for your f prime. Now remember, this is my f prime function. Now we go towards that point of non-differentiability. And for us in this situation, that's a vertical asymptote here. Now as we go to the other side of the vertical asymptote, you'll notice that your function now has slopes that which are negative. They're decreasing. And they start off very steep until those slopes taper off and become a slope of zero. So if we're starting with very steep negative slopes, now we're down in this direction here. So the slopes are going to make their way up here, cross until you cross that x-axis. And when you're crossing that x-axis right here, this point right here would reflect your slope of zero on the other side. And then you can see after, after which that happens, your graph then continues to have slopes in the positive direction, again, slowly increasing. So a general graph would look something like this. This point right here, f prime at the function is 0. And that's referencing this, this value right here. So you can see here we have a graph of our function f and its derivative f prime. All right, let's take a look at another. So for this example here, they want you to match the function f on the left-hand side with its derivative on the right. So what we have here is on the left-hand side, you have your original function f, and then you have your derivative. And these are all mixed up. So what we want to do here is we want to be able to match our actual function f with its derivative on the right and see which one is which. 
So taking a look here, let's take a look at B, for instance, if I want to take a look at B. Notice right here at B, I have points of non-differentiability, right? We have these peaks here. So that means that the derivative at this value should not exist. Well, as I'm looking here, I'm noticing I have two peaks. So I'm expecting a function with two points of non-differentiability, and that's happening right here. If you notice here, we have a break in the graph here and a break in the graph here. And that's illustrated by points of non-differentiability. Furthermore, notice that this line is linear, in which case the slope is constant. So we're expecting a derivative of having a flat line, and that when we have that here, then the slope becomes, again, constant, but in the negative direction, and we have that down here. And lastly, the slope becomes positive, but constant, and we have that down here illustrated by the flat line. So therefore, B matches up with graph 4. Let's take a look at another. For instance, if we look at D here, you'll notice that we have a slope of 0 here, here, and here. Well, which one of the functions on the right-hand side would have to cross the x-axis three times? Looking here, I can see I've got 1, 2, 3. These relate to 1, 2, 3, points where the slope is horizontal. Horizontal slope is 0, and that's matching with the 3 on the right-hand side. Continuing this on further, you can see here that notice the slopes here are positive, positive, and trailing off, and then we have that exact same thing here, positive slopes, uh, and then trailing off until we hit that 0 value. Okay, so graph of D matches with 3. Let's continue on. Notice for A here, if you want to take a look at graph A, you'll see here that the slope, we have a zero slope here and a zero slope here. And in which case here we see our function at 2 has that exact same characteristic. On our function f, we have two spots where the tangent equation has a horizontal slope. And if we go to f prime and look at graph 2, you have two spots here where the derivative is actually zero. Continuing on here to match this, you'll notice that the slopes of this line are negative and becoming less and less steep until they hit a slope of zero, and that's exactly what happens here. The slopes are negative until it hits a slope of zero. Then the slopes continue on uh, in the positive direction, and that's illustrated by the fact that this now these slopes are above the x-axis until we hit a slope of zero again, which is right here and then continues on. So for A, that's going to match with 2. Obviously, you can see here that for the last question C, that's going to match with graph 1. But let's take a closer look as to why. You'll notice with this graph here, the slopes are tending towards 0, but not quite being at 0. They're still in the negative direction. They're still decreasing, still decreasing, still decreasing. And you have that on our graph at 1. You'll notice that the slopes are tending towards zero, but still negative, still negative, still negative. Now the slopes are at their steepest. Then they start to become more shallow at this value here. And you see that in the graph here. The slopes are becoming very steep. And then now the slopes are now becoming less steep until we hit a slope of zero here. And then we cross our slope here of zero. And then the slopes continue on in the positive direction again, becoming very steep and then, and then tapering off and becoming less steep as it goes by, but still positive. We have this idea here, the slopes become very, very steep, they taper off and then become less and less steep, in the, but still in the positive direction. Okay, that concludes uh, today's lesson on differentiability. Please remember that a function is differentiable at a point if the derivative at that point exists. Thank you.